In recent years, it has been difficult to ignore the exponential growth of artificial intelligence. The most powerful algorithms now contain hundreds of billions of connections, and training them costs millions of dollars in a supercomputer. But, as appealing as massive AI is, advancement isn't just about scale. Work on the other end of the spectrum is just as important to the field's future. Some academics are working to make AI development faster, more efficient, and more accessible, and one area that may use improvement is the learning process itself. Because AI models and the data sets they feed on have increased exponentially, complex models, even on supercomputers, might take days or weeks to train. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you what crazy things this self-replicating artificial intelligence could accomplish by next month and what it means for our society as a whole. A recent research released on the preprint server archive outlines how a sort of algorithm known as a hypernetwork may significantly speed up the training process. The study's hypernetwork learnt the internal connections, or parameters, of a million sample algorithms, allowing it to pre-configure the parameters of fresh, untrained algorithms. In a fraction of a second, the AI, known as GHN2, can forecast and determine the parameters of an untrained neural network. In most situations, the algorithms that used the GHN2 parameters outperformed algorithms that had gone through hundreds of rounds of training. There is still potential for improvement, as algorithms constructed using the approach require extra training to attain cutting-edge results. However, if the strategy minimizes the amount of energy, processing power, and money required to construct AI, it might have a favorable influence on the area. Although machine learning is largely automated, that is, no one teaches a machine learning algorithm exactly how to do its task, the process of constructing the algorithms is significantly more hands-on. To change and optimize a neural network's internal parameters such that it can learn a task at a high enough level to be effective, it requires a lot of expertise and experience. It's almost like being the coach rather than the player, DeepMind co-founder Demis Hassabis told Wired in 2016. You're persuading these things rather than telling them explicitly what to do. To lessen the burden, researchers have been working on technologies to automate important parts in the process, such as determining the best architecture for a new algorithm. The architecture of a neural network is the high-level information, such as the number of layers of artificial neurons and how those layers are linked together. Finding the optimum design requires some trial and error, and automating it may save engineers time. So, in 2018, a team of researchers from Google Brain and the University of Toronto created a graph hypernetwork algorithm to handle the job. Of course, they couldn't train a lot of candidate architectures and then put them against each other to see who would win. The range of options is vast, and educating them one by one would rapidly become unmanageable. Instead, they utilized the hypernetwork to forecast the parameters of candidate designs, then run them through a challenge to determine which performed best. The current study expands on this concept. However, rather than employing a hypernetwork to rank structures, the researchers concentrated on parameter prediction. They reasoned that by creating a hypernetwork that is skilled at predicting parameter values, they could then apply it to any new method. And, rather than starting with a random collection of values, which is how most training begins, they might provide algorithms a significant head start in training. A good, deep training data set is required to construct a functional AI parameter picker. As a result, the researchers chose one of a million different algorithmic designs to train GHN2. Because the data set is so huge and diverse, the researchers discovered that GHN2 can generalize effectively to systems it has never seen before. They can, for example, account for all of the normal state-of-the-art designs that people use, said Thomas Kipf a research scientist at Google Research's brain team in Amsterdam, to Quanta recently. That is a significant contribution. Following training, the researchers put GHN2 through its paces, comparing algorithms based on its predictions against traditionally taught algorithms. The outcomes were outstanding. Traditionally, algorithms progressively modify the connections of a neural network through a process known as stochastic gradient descent. When the algorithm completes a job, the actual result is compared to the desired output, is this an image of a cat or a dog, and the network's parameters are changed. Training nudges an algorithm toward an ideal state where mistakes are reduced over hundreds or millions of repetitions. 
Algorithms that used GHN2 predictions without any training matched the accuracy of algorithms that were taught with SGD over thousands of iterations. However, it took GHN2 less than a second to forecast the parameters of a model, whereas classically trained algorithms required 10,000 times longer to achieve the same level. To be clear, the team's performance is not yet cutting edge. Most machine learning algorithms are taught to higher criteria far more extensively. Even if an algorithm like GHN2 fails to make perfect predictions, a plausible outcome, beginning with a collection of parameters that is, say, 60% of the way there is vastly preferable to starting with a set of random values. To attain their ideal state, algorithms would require fewer learning cycles. DeepMind's Peter Velikovy told Quanta, the results are clearly incredibly amazing. They really reduce the energy expenditures tremendously. As billion parameter models give way to trillion parameter models, it's encouraging to see academics develop elegant solutions to supplement brute power. Efficiency, it appears, may come to be valued as highly as size in the coming years. Researchers believe that self-improving robots may eventually lead to AGI due to a process known as recursive self-improvement. The core premise is that as an AI system continues to develop itself through recursive self-improvement, it will become increasingly adept at improving itself. This will swiftly lead to an exponential increase in its intellect, which may eventually lead to AGI. Kumar describes this scenario as quite feasible, stating that, for this to work, we require a number of generally uncontroversial assumptions, that such highly competent agents exist in principle, and that they may be located through a succession of local advances. To this point, recursive self-improvement is a notion at the basis of several hypotheses on how we may progress from today's moderately intelligent robots to super-intelligent AGI. However, Kumar emphasizes that this is not the only possible road to AI superintelligence. Humans may learn how to develop highly capable AGI systems in a variety of ways. This might occur by scaling up current machine learning approaches, such as with faster technology. It might also occur as a result of incremental research advances in representation learning, transfer learning, model-based reinforcement learning, or another area. For example, we may make enough progress in brain scanning and emulation to replicate and accelerate the intelligence of a certain individual, Kumar argues. When systems begin to modify themselves, we must be able to trust that all of their changes are safe. This implies that we must be aware of all potential alterations. But how can we be confident that a modification is safe if no one knows what the adjustment will be? Kumar observes that this problem has two clear answers. The first solution is to limit a system's capacity to generate additional AI agents. However, as Kumar puts it clearly, we don't want to address the safe self-improvement dilemma by prohibiting self-improvement. The second alternative is to allow just certain types of self-improvement that have been proven to be safe, such as software updates or processor and memory upgrades. However, Kumar says that determining which types of self-improvement are safe and which are not is still extremely difficult. In particular, he claims that stopping the building of one specific type of change will demand such a profound grasp of what self-improvement entails that it will likely be enough to solve the complete safe self-improvement problem. Moreover, even if technological breakthroughs allow just limited types of self-improvement, Kumar claims that this isn't the road to pursue since it avoids the basic problem with self-improvement that we want to tackle. We want to develop an agent that can generate another AI agent whose capabilities are so vast that we cannot explicitly reason about its safety in advance. We want to delegate some of the safety thinking and be able to trust that the parent is doing it appropriately, he says. So, what is your opinion on this new type of artificial intelligence which is practically designing better versions of itself continuously? Do you see any dangers in terms of an ever-improving artificial intelligence in a future where they have more power over us and more abilities in the first place? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.